I'm starting the speed run series. I'm doing a little bit of a recording right now for those in my stream. Um, I'm going to lay out some ground rules right off the bat. These are things that I'll put into a fiend's little graphic, include them in the description of every video after this. But some of the important things, uh, and I actually have to mute my stream music for this, uh, number one is going to be no auras. I'm going to lay out these ground rules just so that, you know, if other people want to do the similar sort of thing, they can follow the same rules that I am for this. Um, so yeah, number one will be no auras. Number two will be no group bossing for the entire duration. Uh, all your bossing has to be done solo. Make it really pure to Iron Man mode. And then number three will be no taking advantage of events of, of really any sort. Uh, so that'll include this Tainted Shard, like, right off the bat. I'm just going to toss it, not reclaim it, not use it at all. Uh, once I set up my interface, you'll be able to see it, see my inventory most of the time, and, and know that I'm not using it while I'm skilling. Um, so yeah, that's really what I'm going to base a lot of the time around. Um, also, for those people that they can't really spend a lot of time per day, but they still want to try and attempt to speedrun, I kind of wanted to make that more accessible. Uh, and a little more fair. So what I'm going to do, also because I don't think I can afford to put 10 hours or more a day in, um, so each day since account creation will add about three hours to your time, and then you add your, you know, your total playtime. According to uh, Rune Metrics, you throw those together, and that will be your total playtime for the speed run. Um, I figure three hours is fair, because earlier on your dailies aren't really worth three hours of, uh, of effective XP. Later on they're worth a little bit more, so it kind of balances out. And that seems like a pretty fair addition to the rules, so... Those are the rules. This is the start. Let's go, boys. Oh man, it has been a fun first day. I did a 17 hour stream, I want to say. And, uh, got a whole lot accomplished. I mean, I had, like, 12 average viewers throughout the whole stream, which was just amazing to me. Uh, I had people donate the entire amount of money that I spent on the membership here, which is also crazy to me. Um, and, you might have saw it right at the beginning, maybe a little glimpse, but, well, I'm now 602 total level. So yeah, 602 total level, 73 quest points. Yikes, right? Um, yeah, you can just kind of scan through this if you want to. But, yeah, something like 30 quests done, I'd, I'd guess. 30-something, maybe, at getting towards 40. Uh, yeah, yeah, a whole lot. And uh, now I'm just kind of working on the fletching grind. Um, I've gotten a lot of suggestions for things that I could change in the, uh, the guide, so I will be doing that. Probably the moment I upload this video, and this video isn't being uploaded until I get some sleep. This is happening, this recording right now is happening immediately after the stream. Um, but yeah, I got quite a lot accomplished, and I'm trying not to waste any time, so I'm literally going to be grinding as I record. Um, so yeah, just uh, a lot of these stats just came from Quest. I didn't do all that much grinding, but one of the big things that did change about the route is that... I rushed 30 magic, uh, basically right off the bat. I think I did Waterfall Quest and uh, Blood Pact, maybe one or two other things, and then straight to 30 magic so that I could get Surge. Uh, it saved so much time and traveling and going to different quests. I should have unlocked it before getting all of the lodestones, but I just had to get all the lodestones right off the bat. And I wait wasted some time setting up my interface standing still when I could have just been walking to lodestones that whole time. So. Yeah, of course. Shame on me. I lost a little bit of time, but it's not going to make that much of a difference in the end. Um, yeah, right now I'm just working on fletching, grinded it up from 1 to 10 just so I could finish out this, uh, yeah, this 600 total level. Also, this is a, a suggestion, or a suggested change to the route. Maybe just to change the route that I'm thinking of. It wasn't suggested by anybody, so sorry. Uh very tired brain working here. Um, but these arrow shafts are going to be used later on, or the headless arrows are going to be used later on for uh, broad arrows, right? So like, 
you may as well make them and stock up on them early on instead of just making shield bows that you're not even going to string you're not going to disassemble you're just going to kind of throw away it, it, it's a bit of a waste early on um i feel like and the xp rate isn't all that different for this stuff it, really you just end up getting a little bit more wood cutting xp um yeah uh, the difference is that you have to earn some gold. So what I did is I joined, and this isn't against the rules. I'm going to break down the rules uh, very succinctly, but I'm going to wait until my brain is a little less wore out and do that tomorrow. <laughs> um, basically, though, I joined a friends chat, the Soul Obby friends chat, and I waited for scarab calls. And uh, yeah, went did some scarabs, got lucky, popped one for 80k, sent my cash stack straight from... Um, well, 900 gold when I started them, up to 101k. It was so beneficial, and it allowed me to uh, afford some feathers. Um, so really, that's the that's the one requirement for this uh, this different fleshing route instead of doing shield bows is you have to have some money, uh, actually a, a good chunk of money to get all the way to level 30 fleshing with headless arrows. Um, but yeah, uh, one other thing is that the Tales of the God Wars you can start that from. Um, no requirements, just run to the curator outside of the heart, uh, talk to him, get the little books, and then, uh, assuming you have the Yanail Lodestone unlocked, or even if you don't, you just go there, unlock the Lodestone if you need to, uh, go south of Castle Wars, cross the little bridge, and run to the Incandescent Wisp Colony. You will basically instantly hit level 20 divination. You just have to click 20 little wisps, you just walk around, you touch them once, and you get pops of uh, 250 XP. Like I said, there's 20 of them, so it's 5k, and that gets you straight to level 20. Really going to speed up that uh, that early curve for caches. So yeah, I'm up to 39, and I have one more cache to do today. So it would be my fourth cache. Uh, and my first day of caches uh, wasn't even complete. I only got like 180 points, maybe? 170? Um... And I'm already, like, a significant number of levels over the guide. Uh, at least all the math I did in the guide. Let's see. Uh, day 2, you should only end up at 35, and I'm already 39. I'll probably end up at, like, 42. Nice. Woodcutting level, just just grinding through these levels. Um, I will stop this recording real quick, put in another clip just after to show you my bank. Though it is pretty measly. Again, it's it's day 1. Alright, just did a little bit more uh, scarab popping for some gold, some slayer. Got slayer to 25, almost 26, and this is the bank. So I got uh, 3.1k headless arrows, another 1900 feathers basically. I uh, got my T30 magic set, got lucky, amulet of magic drop. I picked up some fine cloth and bark from uh, Zaf in Varok. I got a few runes up here. I got the black pearls I'm holding on to, and then just a lot of junk, otherwise. Uh, some vials for preparing for, um, you know, herb lore. Explorer's Ring 1, because I, I did that, and then I've got some strange rocks, which I need to get the collection bag. Um, yeah, that, that's basically it. <laughs> pretty, pretty mad bank. You got some... Oh yeah, some veggies stacking up for when I start playing around farms uh, probably tomorrow, so... Yep, that's it.